guys, welcome back to my channel. Well, I have received a lot of requests and made a ton of promises that I would be making this video. So here goes. Today we will be talking about the basics of dispatching. Whether you're an owner operator who's looking to dispatch yourself or you're someone who's looking to dispatch outside carriers, you need to know what you're doing. After all, dispatching is what gets you those loads and therefore money. Something I have never really considered or thought about is the fact that people who are coming into this industry from a different industry or even people who are switching from being company drivers to owner operators need guidance as to how to dispatch. So today I will be sharing with you those basics of dispatching. I dare you to say dispatching one more time. I will quit. Hmm. Dispatching, 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 dispatching. Anyway, ready? Let's go. So obviously this is a topic that I could talk about in great detail. And fun fact, a while ago, I actually created a dispatching course. Yeah. A really boring course and yes I am still here to annoy you. Boring yes but with a ton of useful information within that course but today I will go over the most important points and later on if you guys are interested I'm happy to answer any questions to go into more detail. Obviously dispatching without a load board is near impossible and the key is to find a load board where a ton of brokers participate. Now the one I use is DAT Power because DAT in general is a very popular load board and a ton of brokers use it for the spot market. Now something I mentioned already before, DAT power is worth that extra money if you're using a computer or a laptop in order to book your loads. If you're using your phone, then no matter whether you get the most expensive version of DAT or the least expensive, it will look the same in that phone app. Let me show you. Okay, so here's the DAT power which I use. Uh, this is what it looks like and there are a ton of things you can do with this load board. Uh, you can click on any load right here. It will show you the broker to carry your spot rate from last week. You can also see market maps with this load board. Basically a ton of fun little tools. Now, the cheaper version of this is also a DAT load board, but it's called Trucker's Edge. It costs uh, $39.95 per month. Same searches here, but this is what it looks like. Now, it's still pretty good. There's nothing bad about it, uh, but I just prefer the DAT power just because it's a little bit more user friendly and there are a lot more tools to choose from on the DAT power. But again, this is only if you're using your computer. It's not if you're using your phone. If you're using your phone, you use one app, no matter whether you're using DAT power or Trucker's Edge, it will look the same and I'll show you in just a moment. So I'm searching for DAT. I am going to go ahead and make a new search right here, Columbus, Ohio. And of course, as with everything, you will see that I always put everything wrong. So let's try that again. Columbus, Ohio with a deadhead of 300 miles dry van, but let's change the start date to the 11th. So here we go. This is what the load board looks like. Now, something to note, no matter whether you're paying for the DAT power version, which is expensive compared to other versions or the cheapest version, this is what the app will look like. So it really doesn't matter how much money you spend, you're not getting anything else really from the app. So I don't recommend it. If you're using your computer, yes, it's worth it. Now let's go through this load board for a second. There are several things I want you to pay attention to, but before we do, let's search for a load. Let's say you are in San Antonio, Texas. You don't care where you go. You have a reefer, you're available on the 12th. Your maximum weight is 44,200, let's say, and you're searching back two hours. So let's search for that. Here is our load board. So again, several things I want you to pay attention to when you're trying to book a load. Number one, and I'll keep mentioning this all the time, is the credit score right here. If you find a broker with a credit score less than 90, I don't recommend you book the load, no matter how good the price is, because the brokers with poor credit scores might not pay. So let's see if we can find a bad credit score here. We'll filter like that. Nope, the lowest one is a 90. So all the brokers here are 
pretty darn awesome. Now, another thing to pay attention to is the DTP, also known as days to pay. This shows you the average days it takes for this particular broker to pay you after you invoice them. I usually don't work with brokers who have a DTP of over 30 days because cash flow is really important. And if you're waiting on the money to officially hit your account for a long time, you can get into a lot of trouble. So uh, the highest days to pay here is uh, 29. Uh, so yeah, not bad. Pretty good load board with awesome brokers right here, I would say. Now, something to note, even if the days to pay shows less than 30 days, some brokers will still take longer to pay you, especially at the end of the year. So yes, the days to pay should be less than 30, but be prepared at the end of the year and sometimes at random times during the year, uh, you will get paid within 35 days, sometimes 40 days. I mean, it depends. Sometimes brokers lose invoices, so it's important that you keep on top of this stuff. Now, if you're factoring your loads, it's also important to pay attention to whether a load is factorable. So if you see a check mark next to a particular load, this means that this broker factors. Now, some brokers like right here, see binding transport, they have a great credit score, great days to pay, but they do not factor. So if you factor your loads and book a load with binding transport, you are not getting that money via quick pay. You're not getting that money fast because this broker just does not factor loads. Now, of course, there's also the question of rate and the miles. Uh, so I always look at what the rate is and the miles. I look at the trip miles, which means the loaded miles from shipper to receiver, as well as the deadhead miles to get an idea of what the rate per mile is. More often than not though, the price will not be posted. Like you see these loads right here with just a dash, that means the price is not posted. So you will have to call or email the broker in order to understand what they are offering. Then there's the question of weight. Always pay attention and don't book a load heavier than you can scale unless you want to risk an out of service order at the weight station. Now, another thing I like to do is I like to open a posting to see if there are any notes there because I like to be informed when booking the load. Like for example, here is one. This is a van reefer load, so it can fit on a dry van or a reefer. Uh, it's palletized water ready to go at 8 p.m. delivery in the morning. So I know that this would have to be picked up in the evening, delivered the next day in the morning, paying 700. Eh, pretty crappy load. Now, when you find a load that piques your interest, you can go ahead and call or email the broker depending on what is listed under the contact column right here. Once you talk to the broker, agree on the rate, then the broker will send you a carrier setup packet if you have never worked with this broker before. The carrier packet will usually come in a PDF attachment or via a clickable link where you fill it out on a website. Either way, you fill it out online. Again with the lies. What about the print out and fax back packets? These don't happen often, if at all anymore. Since I started working in this industry, I was asked to print out and put a wet signature on a carrier packet only twice. So don't worry about the print out and fax back packets. They pretty much don't exist. Now let's go ahead and I'll show you what a carrier packet will look like. Okay, so this is a carrier packet that I created for the purpose of this video. It's a sample one. Not all carrier packets will be this long or this neat and beautiful. So things you have to pay attention to here is the initials. You'll have to initial every page sometimes. Sometimes you'll have to put in references as well. Usually three will do. You will have to put the company name, the name of the brokerage, you or your client, if you're dispatching an outside carrier worked with before, the contact name in that brokerage and the phone number. Again, three will do. Uh, the next thing is the carrier profile. This is something that almost every carrier packet has. You will put in your carrier name or your client's carrier name, the DOT number, MC number, physical address, mailing address, remit to address. This is the address where the payment will be sent to if it's a check, uh, whether you're using a factoring company, what's the name of the factoring company, 
And then there will be all of these things, like do you have a TWIC card to be able to pick up in ports? Do you have CARB in order to be able to go through California? All of those things, you will also be asked for the number of trucks, trailers, what type of trailers you have, uh, whether you have team drivers, solo drivers, company drivers, owner operators, all of that stuff goes into the carrier packet. This is pretty much in all carrier packets that are a PDF version. You will have to fill out the day, uh, month, and year of when you're signing this packet, your company name, your MC, and your DOT number, and then there is this agreement. Now, at the end of this agreement, you will have to put in your company name, your name, your title, the business address, the signature. And then you might have something like an advanced policy or payment page uh, where you choose whether advances to carrier are allowed, uh, fuel advances, etc., etc. Uh, you can also maybe get a payments page, something like this, where you have to choose whether you're factoring, whether you want normal pay, which is 30 days in this case for this contract I created. Uh, there is uh, normal pay ACA very often you can choose between getting a mailed paper check or a deposit straight into your account and of course there's also quick pay uh, where the broker charges you a percentage in order to get you that money right away and that's pretty much it you will get these authorization forms for ACH uh, if you choose to get paid with a direct deposit you will have to enter in all of your account information your bank account information and attach a copy of the voided check some carrier packets will have billing instructions at the end usually again this is in the rate confirmation when you're done with the packet you will need to send this contract along with your w9 your certificate of authority and certificate of insurance back to the broker so that they can set you up. Now, sometimes some brokers will ask for you to list them as a certificate holder on your certificate of insurance. This is when you call your insurance company and tell them that you need a new certificate of insurance listing that particular broker. Another thing to mention, if you're factoring loads, you will need to provide the broker also with a notice of assignment. This is a document that your factoring company should be giving to you. Now, once everything is set up with the broker, he or she will send you the rate confirmation. It usually takes no longer than 10 to 15 minutes to receive it. Once you get the rate confirmation, it will look something like this. I'll show you three examples. So this is the first rate confirmation and there are things to pay attention to. Uh, for example, number one is the pickup information, the delivery information. Here you will have the pickup appointment, date and time, uh, and then you have to pay attention to pickup instructions. Some loads require special instructions. For example, do not arrive early to the receiver. Another thing you have to pay attention is to the total charge to make sure that the rate is the same as you agreed with the broker. Now on this rate confirmation, there is nowhere to sign, but let's look at another one right here. So again, here is the shipper, here's the receiver, there is the pickup number, which is really important to pick up the load. Here is the net pay rate. Uh, and here is the place for the signature, uh, name, title, date. Sometimes rate confirmations will also ask for the driver information. And something to note, rate confirmations can come in online form as well as a link. Here is another example of a rate confirmation. So again, pay attention to the pickup location, date and time, pick up from, to. Uh, also pay attention to the weight. That's another thing I completely forgot about. Pay attention that the weight is correct. Uh, there's the delivery time. Here is the total charge. Uh, and that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. So once you get this, you just sign, date, and send it over to the broker. Once you send that rate confirmation back to the broker, you're pretty much all set. But the next thing I want to talk about is another question I've been getting a lot, and that is invoicing. So let's go ahead and look at an invoice together. Okay, so I made this sample invoice, which I will actually attach in a link down below so you guys can use it. I don't use invoices like this. I use QuickBooks to invoice all of the brokers, uh, but this is something that you can use. It's pretty easy. So when you're invoicing, basically what you wanna do, we will fill it out together. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna fill out your carrier name, the name of your company, your address, your phone and email. 
the invoice number, for example, if this is your first invoice, I would make it 001. Then we have the bill two. Here you will put in the brokerage name, let's say ABC Brokers. Then you will put in the date, let's say it's the whatever it is, not 2020, God forbid, the amount, let's say that this load was booked for $4,000 and the due date, which is usually 30 days from the invoice date. So let's put 5-19-2022. Then right here, you always want to reference the load number. So to give you an example, here's a rate confirmation, right? The load number would be this number right here, PD004918. So let's fill that in. Then you will put in your truck and trailer number. Let's say you're driving unit uh, 100, trailer 25. There we go. And the driver's name, who actually was the one driving that load from point A to point B. Now right here, you will want to put in the load information, the date refers to the date of pickup, the commodity, and the amount agreed with the broker. So here we go. And then right here, you will put in, if necessary, the remit to address. So this is the address where you want to receive payment. And finally, don't forget about the total due. Right here, you will put 4,000. Perfect, your invoice is ready to be sent. Of course, you have to fill out all of this information, but yeah, it's pretty much ready. When you deliver a load, you have your invoice ready, you're ready to invoice the broker. So what you'll do is you'll collect the bill of lading, any accessorial receipts, the rate confirmation, and your invoice, and you will send it to the broker's accounting team. That email is usually listed at the bottom of the rate confirmation. Now, if you're factoring, you will be sending all those documents to your factoring company instead of the broker. Now, before I let you guys go, I want to mention a brief thing. I know that I'm providing a link to that sample invoice down below, but I really highly recommend to actually use QuickBooks. And the reason is it reminds you that the invoice is overdue when it is overdue. It automatically tracks your invoices by due date. This is something that becomes very hard to track, especially with all the paperwork involved in booking loads and managing the loads and managing a company in general. So I hope you guys found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next one.